I didn't even put it in the dryer, it just shrunk. Strugglers, it's been 519 days since my Oscar-nominated video, There Are A Lot Of Weird Competition Shows, was released. And if I've learned anything from Elton John lately, it's that you can essentially release the same thing again and have it be wildly successful again. I can't wait for Crocodile Rock featuring Lil Nas X to come out next year. So I'm gonna talk about a bunch of weird competition shows again today. Why not? Let's do it. I've got a mix of some older shows and some very new shows that I'd like to cover. And spoiler alert, they're all a little bit silly. I'd like to begin with the least competition-y of the bunch and then slowly work our way up to the more competitive stuff. So to start us off, let's look at 2007's reality show, Armed and Famous. They're armed and famous. Armed and Famous was a show that I thought was gonna be a lot of fun to watch. Look, look at this promotional image. Come on, look at that thing. Tell me this isn't a romp just waiting to happen. Well, it's not. <laughs> it's neither a romp nor a riot for that matter. It actually had a pretty serious tone most of the time, which caught me off guard. Celebrities travel to Muncie, Indiana, where they become real life police officers. Each one goes through the same training that cops get and each is joined by a veteran of the Muncie police force when they get their assignments. I'm training to become an officer, a cop, a Muncie, Indiana policeman. Hello? Are you there? But Scott, this isn't a competition show. They're competing against crime. Okay, it counts. It absolutely counts. I'm in charge here, and I say, I say it's a competition show. <laughs> the celebrities that were featured on the show were Jason Acuna, or Wee Man from Jackass, Eric Estrada, who played a cop in the show Chips, Latoya Jackson, who's obviously a singer, Trish Stratus, the WWE star, and Jack Osborne, who is Ozzy and Sharon Osborne's son. <laughs> Quite the eclectic mix of people. The wildest part to me is that the celebrities were legitimately sworn in as police officers. They gave them badges, and they gave them guns, and they let them arrest people, for real, not as a goof. What in the heck? Whose idea was this? I want to make one thing real clear. We're here to enforce the law, okay? And make a TV show, of course. So two things. And goof around a little bit, you know, do some PR for the Muncie Police Department. All right, so three things tops. And you'll do everything from routine, let me see your license, thanks, have a nice day, to getting it on. You had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. Sir, I'm gonna ask you to get out the car. Get out the car, sir. Dang, dang, dang. Oh good lord, Latoya. <laughs> they gave this woman a gun and the first thing she does is shoot a man for no reason. This is gonna be a wild ride. Latoya was pretty interesting on the show because she started out as, in the nicest way possible, the least competent of the bunch. Okay. You okay? You okay? Yeah. We're not here to hurt each other. Hands up, Jack. Whoa. So I'm just gonna come down. Oh! Okay. Squeeze yeah. real slow, because there's 11 bullets that aren't even on the target. Yeah. But by the time they actually hit the streets, she was by far the most gung-ho out of everybody. Turn around. I need for you to back out of here. Back out of here. Okay, he has a warrant also according to Okay, okay. you're under arrest. No warrant. I just got out of court. Under arrest. And I think the most notable episode was the one where Latoya and Trish go undercover as prostitutes. What's up? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? I don't know how much. It gives a whole new meaning to what that officer said earlier. Everything from routine, let me see your license, to getting it on. Come on, Latoya, offer him a discount. He's talking to me and he's pleasuring himself. Just talk to him, we're gonna take him down. Yeah. Just continue to talk to him, okay? This is so much more intense than most celebrity-based reality shows. Nobody is dealing with this stuff on Dancing with the Stars. I pray to God. I'm the lady that you were uh, doing that okay, indecency well, to, say, and I just want you to know I'm that I don't want you to do that again to anybody else. I've left to say to you. You are masturbating in yeah, front of the Toya Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> the pure rage coming out of Estrada is one of my favorite parts of the whole show. In this same episode, he gets in a shouting match with some guy that they're arresting. No, 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 no I'm not, I'm not. Perhaps I'll take the uniform off and get in there and smack him. Maybe I shouldn't have cursed, but uh, it happens. Don't tell no. the Sarge. Oh, yeah, my lips are sealed. Okay. But you know he was here. You saw it? This man had to deal with more awkward interactions than everybody else combined, and it's not even close. He kept getting recognized while he was on duty, and <laughs> women were always hitting on him. Would you sign my boot for me? What? Glad to see you, good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going? 
County jail. How far? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get rid of me, punch. <laughs> Honestly, maybe they should have had him play the prostitute because it seems like he would have had a lot of takers. He wants to call child protection on me because my son has a viral infection and every time he goes and farts, he uh, has diarrhea and he has an infection. Yeah, no, we got a TMI in progress. Can we get back up in here immediately? One of my testicles has enlarged from getting zapped by a taser. What the hell is happening? <laughs> Some of my favorite one-off moments from the show were this shoplifter ignoring Jason because she thought he was pranking her. Ma'am, I'm a police officer. You have to stop and talk to me. Stop, ma'am. Oh, you I stop. We are the real police. I also enjoyed Jack Osborne seriously considering shooting a man. We'll know what to do when the guy comes flying out the back door. If he's got a gun. Boom, boom, boom. I, I think I'd do it. And Latoya Jackson being terrified to search this building even though the camera guy was already inside and it was clearly safe to go in. Overall though, as giddy as I have been throughout this video, the show was pretty boring. I figured there would be more goofs. Maybe they would focus on the Academy part more. That seems ripe for silliness. <laughs> <laughs> But they clearly weren't going for silliness. That wasn't the point of the show. They wanted to be more of it, it, like what cops always has been, but they wanted to plug celebrities into it. Just kind of a, a little bit of a twist on a formula that was already working. After I talked to this lady and she's sitting there crying, I was feeling emotional for her, you know? sad and all that. And it seems like audiences agreed with that because the show was canceled after only four episodes aired and apparently they shot and edited six. But all that being said, I'd say Armed and Famous gets three big heads out of 10. Speaking of famous, quick question for you. Do you happen to have a famous relative of any kind? Well, then you would be perfect for this next show. That is, wow. What are, what are the odds of that? <laughs> Weird. Claim to Fame is hosted by Kevin and Frankie Jonas, a sentence I literally never thought I would utter. The dynamic between these two on the show is actually very good. In our family, talent grows stronger with every sibling. Sure. I kind of forgot that Frankie Jonas even existed, and it's that very reason that he is perfect for this gig. The premise of the show is kind of embarrassing. I don't know, I feel a certain way about it and I have a hard time explaining why. Have you ever thought what it would be like to live your life in the shadow of a famous relative? The lack of attention, the jealousy? I'm really not sure what I would do. King, who made you say that? <laughs> People care about Kevin Jonas, okay? What is this lie? What is this lie being perpetuated in front of my very eyes? Inside this legendary Hollywood residence, once home to Katy Perry are 12 people. I wanna emphasize, make very clear, that piece of information literally never comes up again. <laughs> okay, so here's what the show is about. These contestants are all related to famous people in some way or another. For example, they tell us that this girl is Whoopi Goldberg's granddaughter and this girl is Simone Biles' sister. Other than that, in terms of the first episode, we are completely in the dark. We don't know who anybody else is. The goal is to make it as long as possible without your celebrity relative being revealed. And then whoever's left standing at the very end wins $100,000. This is so dumb. <laughs> Take the concept of the masked singer. The person in the costume is the celebrity. And then when they're unmasked, it's kind of fun. It's a little bit exciting. It's like, oh wow, I had no idea that Tony Hawk could sing like that. Interesting. Like there's something to it, you know? There's, there's an actual weight to the mystery. When the reveals happen on this show though, it's like, oh, your Chuck Norris's grandson. I am Max Norris. Sick, dude. Maybe it would be cool to find out one day that a friend of yours is Chuck Norris's grandson, but like just some random guy on Hulu? I, not so much. I figure Chuck Norris has a grandson and it, I suppose it's him. I, it doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> there is also a competitive aspect to the show, of course. Did you think that I forgot about the title of this video? I did, briefly, I will admit, I'm sorry about that. In the first episode, everybody had to take part in a talent show, and then the winner of that was gonna be safe from elimination that night. And I gotta say it, talent shows are inherently unfair. Not everyone has a talent that's visually impressive or interesting, and these people didn't sign up to be in a talent show, they signed up to low-key flex their cousin or whatever. And the winner gets a huge advantage here. I mean, immunity? What? Well, What's better than immunity? Plus they get a bonus clue as to who somebody else's famous relative is. It's OP, man. Really quick, if you had to enter a talent show in less than 30 minutes, it's happening very soon. What's your talent? What are you gonna do? Quick, hurry up, tell me. Okay, did you say sing? Statistically, probably, yeah. Singing, dancing, or acrobatics, 
magic, and maybe comedy. Those are, th those are the big ones. They work well for talent shows because they're easy to showcase, right? Oh, you're funny? Tell us some jokes. Make me giggle a little bit. Oh, you're a very skilled author? How are you gonna show me that? <laughs> Who's to say that somebody that's an incredible author isn't as talented as a comedian? I'm to say, okay? Because if you can't show me on a stage in less than three minutes, it's not a talent, all right? In college, all of the freshmen on our football team had to do a talent show. Just, it's like an embarrassing team bonding thing, whatever. And I was like, oh sh <laughs> I'm good at stuff, but nothing that really translates well to a stage performance. Like, what am I gonna get up there and organize the files on my coach's computer? No. So I decided to say that my talent was baking and then I busted out a batch of freshly baked cookies from my backpack and tossed them out to everybody in the, in the audience. And let me tell you, the place went nuts. I brought the house down with that one, okay? Easily the biggest reaction out of any of the freshmen on the whole football team. Only my real talent was being a little liar because I didn't bake those cookies, my mom did. <laughs> I texted her and asked her if she would do it and she brought them to the back door at my dorm and we did a little drug deal and I won the talent show and I've never publicly admit that before. It feels good to get that off my chest. Anyway, back to the show that I'm supposed to be talking about. Remember Chuck Norris's grandson? He is also a little cheaty McCheater pants. I don't wanna sound like pretentious or anything, but like I would be surprised if like anyone in this house is related to someone that's like more famous. They get to the end of the episode when somebody is supposed to guess somebody else's relative and the director just stops the show right in the middle of that. Apparently this little snake was using his phone during the day. And obviously you can see why that would be a problem on a show where people are hiding their identities or they're, they're hiding their relative's identity. These people are ultimately pretty unimportant. <laughs> and you know what? I gave Johnny a really hard time on Is It Cake for sabotaging those tacos. I kept calling him a cheater. Technically he didn't cheat because the producers allowed him to do it. So the producers are the ones that messed up on that. And I'm gonna take all of that anger that I had towards Johnny and redirect it towards Max, okay? How dare you? And in front of Frankie Jonas, no less. Have you no shame, Max? If the phone wasn't seen, I would have been celebrating tonight. That's what it is, I broke the rule. Bro, could you possibly sound more annoyed at the fact that you got caught breaking the rules? Like, what the? As dumb as I think the concept of this show is, I am gonna continue watching it. <laughs> Unironically, I wanna finish it. And I didn't include anything in this video of anything after episode one because I don't wanna spoil anything for you. I actually do think it's an interesting show. I kind of recommend it. I hate to say that out loud, but I do. It's so new that the day I'm recording this, it's not even done yet. It's still coming out with new episodes, so. Get in while the getting's good. Is that what they say? It's like a mixture of The Masked Singer and Who Done It in a way. And it has the best Jonas Brother, how could you go wrong? I'm giving claim to fame seven big heads out of 10. The next show on our journey is Estate of Panic. You ever watch Fear Factor? This is kind of like that, if they just did the same challenge over and over. I know I'm not gonna die, at least I hope I'm not. The show is hosted by my favorite character to play in Uncharted 2 online multiplayer. And the premise is very simple. Contestants go into a room, they try to collect as much money as quickly as possible, and then they get out. The last person to leave the room is eliminated and also the person who collected the least amount of money is eliminated. Then the final person standing does one final challenge and if they complete that they get to take home all of the money that was collected by everybody throughout the entire night. Well that sounds all fine and dandy until you realize that's it. Well are there many challenges throughout to switch things up? There are not. Does the show have any interesting twists to keep viewers engaged? No your honor. And that's not to say the show is boring it's just to say that it's a one trick pony. There's nothing wrong with being a one trick pony. I think it's interesting that a pony does tricks at all. You don't see that very often. A lot of the rooms involve flooding waters, shout out Outer Banks. This would be very stressful to deal with. Getting your sneakers all wet, shoving soggy cash into your underwear, simply dreadful. I was so relieved that I wasn't gonna be the last person stuck in there swimming around with the snakes with no way out at all. I mean, I think there's probably a way to get out. <laughs> or maybe there isn't, and this person is still trapped in the flooded basement to this day. When I first crawled into the pipes, I was shocked that I wasn't able to stand up. Because usually when I crawl around in the sewers, I am able to stand. There are also a lot of rooms that feature live snakes. And these poor animals, they just 
constantly were taking so much abuse. Reality show producers in the 2000s were just throwing a dart at a wall and picking who they were gonna mistreat that day. Everything happens so fast during these challenges that it's really hard to follow what's going on. They're just rummaging through cabinets and buckets and snakes, grabbing cash really quickly. But it, as a viewer, it's very hard to see what's going on because it's happening like, like this. This is how it's happening. Coincidentally, the best scene in the whole show, in my opinion, is the one where they went into the sticky kitchen. It forced everybody to slow down because they were all getting stuck in this goo. And it's one of the few rooms that didn't give me a headache to watch. <laughs> my worst fear was being helpless. I can't move. I can't move. Feeling like I can't move and I'm suffering. This poor woman, <laughs> she sounds so defeated. I can't get out. Okay, there was no saving me. RIP to this woman. There was no way out. She's probably still in the goo. Another thing that was kind of funny was that in episode five, they mentioned that men have won every episode so far. So they only brought two guys this time and they were competing against five women. Time for a change. <laughs> and a man ended up winning anyway. <laughs> and then also episode six, the final episode, a man won that one too. Undefeated. Let's go. Boys, boys, boys. It's hard to imagine that a person would actually live here because the estate is just massive and it would just be frightening. I couldn't imagine having all these rooms and all the bumps and noises in the night. That must be why Katy Perry moved out. Or wrong show, sorry. <laughs> Overall, the challenges tend to go on for too long. Again, there's really not a whole lot to see. So the gimmick wears off after 30 seconds per room. Oh, this one uses electricity. <laughs> zap, zap. <laughs> all right. Let's bring in the snakes. On the other hand, the budget of shows like this is so impressive to me. I'm sure this concept is something that a YouTuber could or probably has done since then on a smaller scale, but there's something to be said about flooding an entire mansion's basement for eight minutes of content. Just don't let Mr. Beast get a whiff of this. He will take it way too far. My favorite part of the whole show though is at the very end when the host says, Now, if you don't mind, get out of my house. Congratulations. Thank you. Now go down to my house. Okay. There's one more challenge. I'm kidding. Get out of my house. That's what I do every time we have company, so this speaks to me. A state of panic is a clean five big heads out of 10. And that brings us to our final show, Holy moly. This is by far the most lighthearted of the bunch and also my personal favorite. Is it a coincidence that it's the most similar to big heads? Who's to say? I think the most obvious way to describe this show is it's Wipeout with mini golf. That's a winning combination in my book. Mini golf is already goofy as heck. You add these big obstacles into the mix, it can only get better. This show does a fantastic job of creating armchair quarterbacks. And by that, I mean. Oh, that was decisive. When I look at these obstacles, my immediate thought is, yeah, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that I could do this with zero issue. Take this, for example. I know it's a lot harder than it looks. North I promise you I could do it. And that's what keeps me watching. The psychic from Maryland. Here we go. This is pure sack of potatoes stuff. This is just the momentum yeah. in a sack of potatoes. It's embarrassing how poor of an effort some of these contestants put forward. Is going what, right is, what is this? What? what the hell is this? What are you doing? Oh, oh it got to a... <sighs> Lean. Even just a little bit. You know the board is gonna move, so anticipate that. Oh, they had no shot. I mean, there was no chance right there. If you fail an obstacle, it counts as a one-stroke penalty to your score, so it is definitely in your best interest to give it your all on these obstacles. That could be the difference between winning or losing the cash prize at the end. Oh, he slipped from the start. <laughs> I appreciate the effort. Execution needs a little work. Something that I think really helps the show a lot is the hosts. Having silly hosts or announcers is kind of a gamble when it comes to shows like this. Sometimes they're just too much and it comes off as a little annoying. And sometimes they just don't quite hit the mark and it really doesn't add anything to the experience. It's tough to find that perfect balance, but when you do, it can take your show from just kind of fun and move it into top tier TV. In my opinion, that is what Rob Riggle and Joe Tessitore do for this show. Don't mind me. 
Now, what is going on? Oh, she's influencing. She's, she's influ influencing. Is that what influencing Joe? is right there? We are seeing fitness influencing right in front of our eyes, Riggle. The appeal of Rob and Joe is that they're not trying so hard to play the straight man, funny man roles. Neither one of them is a total buffoon, and neither one of them is taking it overly serious. Get thrown by that? Is there butter on his pants? He just, he just slipped off. The absurdity of the show is never undermined by their commentary because they're not acting like what they're doing is cringy. Watch that light on top of the popcorn microwave. Brucey is off. Oh, oh he got eaten alive. Vaporized. Oh. oh my gosh, that was everything I hoped it would be. Somebody left a comment on my Is It Cake video that I think sums this up very well, and I totally agree with it. I'll put it up on screen, but they're basically saying that they're annoyed with hosts constantly trying to break the fourth wall and they're being overly self-aware. It's like the show is too nervous to take itself seriously, so it wants to get in front of it and be like, hey guys, this is all just kind of a goof, right? You can't you can't criticize the show because we, we think it's dumb too. Holy moly doesn't do that. They lean into the goofiness without ever directing questioning why it's happening. Here he goes on Santa's sleigh, trying to hang on to the North Pole. If you have a dad who loves dad humor, be sure to show him the episodes where they do the hole with the big woodpecker. Now it's time to jump on a cold, hard pecker. Todd Angle, the 48-year-old animal lover who should feel right at home with this giant pecker. Piggy really bending over and grabbing low on that shaft. Another thing that I think helps the show is the rather intense application process. I had actually considered applying for this show a few months back, but that was before I saw how much work it was gonna be. They want me to go film myself at a real golf course making 30 foot putts, five of them. Can't you just take my word for it? I'm really good, guys, I'm really good at golf. No, I think I'll just stick to applying for Survivor every few months until they finally give me a shot. Still holding out hope. No, I legit would love to be on Survivor. So if anybody knows somebody casting, I, I would love to do that. <laughs> this does a good job of weeding out the people who are objectively bad at golf that would make for boring TV. Everybody on the show is pretty dang good for the most part, which is good because it's more impressive watching somebody sink a long putt than just kind of drag the ball around the green the whole time. That sliding the ball into the whole thing is cheating. Since when? Since they miniaturized golf. That was an issue that I had with Wipeout. There were so many contestants that had no business being on that show. Like, would it be funny if your sweet, frail old grandma missed a three foot putt and got eliminated in the first round? Of course not. But when that person is a division one golfer and hosts a podcast titled, Why You Suck at Golf, that's incredible. <laughs> that makes that so good. High production quality, lots of action and suspense, and just an overall really good fun vibe makes this show an easy 10 big heads out of 10, baby. Let's go give this show an Emmy already. What are we doing? Holy moly. All right, there we have it, strugglers. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a while since I really dove into the competition shows. I miss doing it. It felt like for a while the market got a little bit, if you know what I mean. But would you tell Picasso to stop painting simply because another artist picked up a brush? Feel free to use that as your senior quote, by the way. Um, anyway, I did a collab with Mike Crocker. I've mentioned him before. He did this really sick thing where I told a story from when I was in college and something crazy happened. And then he went and he did stop motion Lego animation to kind of act out the scenes. So good. He did such a good job. Please go check that out. I'll link it in the description. I've got new merch coming out very soon. I think you're gonna like it. It's. I think you're gonna like it. Extra thank you to my patrons. Those that are listed here are in the top tier on there. Y'all are also 10 big heads out of 10. But just let's be clear about that. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, all that good stuff. I will talk to you again very soon. Now, if you don't mind, get out of my house. Goodbye.